Good afternoon. I'd like to call the uh, special planning uh, meeting to order our workshop uh, for October 11th at 4.30 p.m. Uh, Ms. Becca, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Joe Chappell. Here. Fern Ogden. Here. Don McBride. Absent. Renee Spinato. Here. Chris Bryant. Here. Thank you. Uh, we would normally a public hearing regarding uh, uh, amending any proportion of the our ordinance. We're going to be discussing that at, at length here shortly. Uh, before we do that, no, you know what? The minutes, the minutes we'll do in our regular meeting. Correct? Yes, yes. <coughs> Thank you. So we will have a public hearing regarding amending a portion of ordinance 2422, specifically residential accessory structures. Uh, and, and possibly needed changes. Those were last put into effect. As near as we can tell, around November 17, 2009, so perhaps it's an opportunity for us to uh, at least revisit those things, tweak a few things, see if there's some middle of the road areas that we can get to. I'd like to start off a little planning situation. We only have an hour to go, so we'd like to start off with some pictures that we took that we can let our commissioners and any of our public folks see here of some of our buildings. <coughs> This happens to be one of the buildings, and, and where they're at, and, and when the, why it happened is of no matter uh, if they happen. This is a building setting all by its lonesome out in the middle of a field uh, in what we would call our rural resident, residential district out uh, around Lake Guthrie. Sitting by its lonesome, supposed to have had a major structure, of course, with it, and uh, that will be followed up very, very uh, more sternly, I'm sure, in the future. Uh, maybe move on. Uh, here's a little picture where we had some, uh, some of these uh, containers move in. We've seen a lot of those on the railroad cars and the ships. Those are also not part of what we need here in Guthrie. Uh, and uh, that was just something to show you that we have had these and uh, we're going to try to make sure that that no longer happens. These pictures, the first ones are going to be of things that we don't particularly like uh, or not happy about and maybe haven't met our criteria, got in for whatever reason. This happens to be a large building that re replaced an old barn, which was far better than, than the barn was. But that neighbor next door got quite upset about the fact that he was looking at a very large building. This too does not meet our criteria, and it is of a metal, metal building structure there, even though it's got a cupola, up, a cupola up on top. This is a, uh, an example of a, of a building, a metal building, uh, that got built right in front of a very, very nice home uh, out again in that residential district. There's the building, uh, a metal building. Uh, the sad part here is that there's a lot of room in the backyard in the area where this building could have been and uh, unfortunately this also got through and, and these are things that we've had people get very upset about and it, 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 the vision of the neighbors, uh, it, uh, it interferes with that as they're trying to look around their, their neighborhood in this case. The and, as I, and as I remember that particular one um, is right across from the lake. Yes it is across from the lake. So the, all, the, the home next door lost part of their Lake View. Lake View, because that's, the, in fact, the home next door, you can see it behind it there. So when they're sitting on their porch, they've got this um, white metal building. And this was permitted, by the way, too. By the way, you'll notice that there's chain link fence also in that front yard. Also doesn't meet our criteria, and uh, sometimes it just slips in. Uh, it does happen to be black chain link, which you lose a little bit of, but still, uh, that's something that we're going to have to be a little bit, uh, a little bit better about addressing in our in our code enforcement. Next one, please, Aaron. This happens to be the back of a building again over in that rural residential district. It's a very large building. There are homes directly across the street from this. You'll see a larger, larger shot of it in a minute. Uh, and you're looking at an extremely large building, probably certainly higher than the house, and uh, perhaps even uh, maybe even more square footage than the, the the residence on it. Again, something that shouldn't have happened. Now we're going to get to our little better side here where some of the folks have, have certainly tried to comply. Uh, this home, at this little accessory building was at first a metal building. Uh, the gentleman was informed that that didn't meet code. He was able to come in and put, other, uh, put another coating of, of a wood type veneer on it. This is another shot of it. It's on probably a three, four acre lot. Certainly uh, meets our criteria of a, a larger parcel. Uh, it could have been uh, obviously placed uh, more to the back of the building uh, of the red main residence. Kind of sits out on its own, but at least uh, color-wise and compatibility-wise of matching the home, you can see the home to the left. Uh, it is certainly uh, much better than uh, some of the others we've encountered. I want to. Go I ahead, just, Joe. I want to make a point on that too. Um, 
You know, what a difference it would have made if it had doors that looked <laughs> like they belong in a residential area instead of... Is it me? I mean, it actually looks... Pardon me? Is it just me, or does that building look like it's... Well, it's probably the picture. Yeah, it looks opposite. Yeah, I think the... It looks like a storage unit. Is that not the building? Pardon? Uh, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, anyway, that's just again, had it been closer to the straight. main structure or maybe behind it, as, as as our criteria actually calls out for, it would certainly not have been as noticeable. You'll note also there's some chain link on that one, and a little bit did get in the front of the home, and uh, uh, these are just things we're hopefully, uh, along with with our changes, we can hopefully see a little better enforcement of what uh, of what our criteria is. Next page, there. Uh, this is uh, this is another uh, dwelling that uh, another accessory building uh, out there in the, in the Guthrie Lake area. This one, as you can see, uh, the homeowner uh, again complementary uh, colors with the home. Uh, even did some wainscoting with stone. Uh, put a window in it, and certainly endeavored to make it really blend in and uh, and fit with the with the home. So something far more. Uh, uh, Pleasant uh, for all of us to see, and, and certainly along with our restri our, our covenants is, and conditions. Is Go that ahead. metal or wood? That uh, I, th I think we again we have a we have a metal. metal. We have a metal. You can see the the, uh, the grooves up the mm -hmm. side there, uh, and uh, I believe he was informed afterwards that again a little out of compliance. But it does look attractive. And did yes. what he could. Yes. Out of, yes. out of the it's rock yes. Yes. Yeah. as well. And as again, so. Things can be done even with some of those that are a little out of compliance to make them fit in much better. And that's kind of what the aim has been from the complaints that planning has got from some of the neighbors and things. Next, uh, this happens to be one of the, the little under 200 square foot uh, structures. Uh, better Built Barns makes these. Uh, that structure happens to be about 17, 18 years old. It's about 160 square feet, so it falls under our 200 limit, which is, is allowed without a permit. What we have run into, and, and I think we probably need to address as we revisit our uh, our uh, information here and our ordinances, is that we've had people putting three and four of these in their backyard. And uh, that gets a little crowded back there, but uh, this would certainly be one that, and if you've ever seen their barns out there, they do a very good job, um, and these are more of a stick-built one as versus metal. This happens to be our uh, Guthrie Lake uh, restroom facilities, uh, and here our city, you can see what our city did. Nice block building, and uh, again, uh, earth tone colors that certainly fit in with the, the surrounding area and, and are, are much more compatible with, uh, uh, with touring or people coming in to see us as tourists and, uh, and uh, a nice pleasant view around the lake, and, uh, as well as obviously a facility that can be used. Nice job by the city, I believe. Next, Aaron. Joe, you've got to talk about this one. Oh, no, this was just, this is a building. Um, what I've noticed, and I've looked at a lot of metal buildings, is that, uh, and I know we can't restrict color, but a lot of times when they aren't light colors, they sort of blend in with the landscape a little bit more. Also notice that, and there's a couple more pictures, when they have a, when they have a roof, that is a different color, and they have a little bit of an eave, like this one does here. Of course, cupola helps as well, and windows. And um, but anyway, just just an idea that they can, you know, that's a, if you take the porch off that building uh, with the roof. Usually, when the roof ends right at the wall, then it looks like. Then it's just a metal building. Then it's just a metal building. This. You know, if, if, if we could have some kind of requirement that they have a roof with an eave, it makes all the difference in the world in the building. And I know we can't mandate what color their roof is, but um, it would be nice to maybe match the color of the roof of their home. I think there is, and there's a picture later I'll show you. This is exactly what we don't want. And this is right behind a little bungalow on the west side, and next to it, you can't see it, but... There's also one of the, uh, you know, pop-up carports that's much the same color, and then you have this, you know, turn-of-the-century bungalow right behind it. That uh, sits right on the corner of Noble and 17th. And 17th. So, as you drive by, you see the home, and next to it, this building yeah, is taller than the house. 
And they once again, blocks the whole um, corner. you know, I don't know if it's something that we can address, but what a difference a garage door makes if they aren't these um, roll-up type looking. Kind of industrial roll Yeah, industrial. Doors. Now this one, this is on the west side, and I just took the picture the day before yesterday. One of the things that's deceiving about this picture is that the roof on this metal building is as dark as the roof on the house. And there is nothing obtrusive about this building. It also has the eaves, if, if you'll notice. Um, it's the same color as the house, and the roof is the same color. And once again, it's not a huge barn. You know, to me, a lot of the difference is the difference between a barn and, an ex and a building. Mm -hmm. And where... This is, uh, that house faces uh, college, and I don't know what numbered street it is. 16th, 17th, um, when this building went up, you know, I usually, uh, just because I usually get phone calls about metal buildings, it seems like, from friends and uh, different people. Um, I was just driving around, uh, I'd gone over to look at the new park, and when I drove by this, at first I didn't notice that it was a metal building just because of the, the, it matches, I wish I, I should have darkened the roof, but anyway. Well, that's, it, goes, it goes with the trees, you, that's, you actually lose some of the... Some and of the, once again, it's not, it's not white, it doesn't, of course, you know, if the house is white, I guess you could, um, but anyway, we're, we're not going to control colors, but, um, and I, I don't, I think that's the only two I provide, maybe, is there any more? Got any more, Eric? Okay. No. Doesn't the current ordinance recommend? Thank you much, very much, Aaron. That the colors complement the yeah. colors. Yes. It does. So a lot of this is current ordinance, but we haven't forced it, or we don't always catch catch them before they're constructed, right? Yeah. Okay. okay the next part of our uh, our workshop, what I'd like to do is now call on the commissioners uh, for your comments on what you just saw, along with the. Uh, if you had a chance, hopefully, to go over what uh, what staff provided um, in their initial draft for us at our last meeting, uh, many comments, uh, and what we'd like to hear is, is from each of you commissioners any input. We'll make some notes. I'm sure uh, Mr. Beck will make notes. And then after that, we'll ask for any comments from our, our folks from the public, and then we'll move to the staff for further uh, upgrading on what they've done for us on their uh, on their uh, their thoughts and stuff. So, um, want to start with Miss Renee? What, what are your okay. thoughts, even uh, on the pictures or anything that you've seen? Okay, I love the idea of the pictures and seeing the uh, the pros and the cons of, of each because I do think some accessory buildings can be done very nicely. I know a lot of uh, comments I've heard in the past were that people want want something where they can have a little extra room to store a few things, but they don't want to pay too much money. Well. Part of, again, living in a residential area within city, um, we have neighbors that are close within eyeball distance. And, you know, I, I realize there are not CCNRs of, of such, but we do have um, a requirement to our neighbors. You know, they see our property. It's kind of like an, an unwritten contract, if you will, that we have with people in our neighborhood. That even though we're inside our house, um, people driving by or our neighbors see what we have and if each person in the neighborhood took pride in their entire lot uh, it keeps keeps the neighbors happily and also then serves to drive up the property value of the neighborhood and that's a, a good deal of what I think we're all looking for is not just just a home or, or a roof over our heads but also improving the, um, the property value which we live so this has always been a, a lengthy and still a heated discussion for um, what we can do without Im imposing too much on everybody's right, but realizing that we have, we have a town that we have to take care of and the view of it to be done. So um, the discussion goes on, but a picture is, is worth a thousand words, and I think we're, we're on the right road still. Headed that way, and the right road is, is getting stronger, and I'm happy to see that. So, 
Good, thank you. I might mention uh, for the viewing public or whatever, we have a nice blend on our commission. We have several that have uh, been on the commission more years than we almost like to say. Five, six, and we have some, some newer ones. Always nice to have fresh ideas and input. And we'll start with one of our newer gentlemen, Mr. Chris. Uh, your comments and thoughts on, on whatever on this. Yeah, well, I, following our last meeting, I shared um, some information about what was being discussed and considered with um, the Facebook group that I that I started called Strong Towns Guthrie. Um, we have quite a few members on there that are uh, pretty interested and engaged uh, in uh, urban design and planning and um, historic preservation, but also livability. And so a few uh, of the comments that I received from, from these citizens um, were also echoed some of my own thoughts. Um, so a few, a few different points I'd like to highlight. One is, how do we educate property owners um, regarding the current ordinance? Because I think we've talked about this before. When they see things that are already in existence, whether they're in compliance or not, they assume, well, it must have gotten through the permitting process or it must be okay because no, you know, no one's given them a citation yet. Or, so how do we educate the, com you know, the community about what the expectations are? Not everybody knows what the process is for uh, getting a permit or what ordinance to consult, and it's a lot harder to go back in and tell someone they have to change something, uh, especially if they spent a lot of money on it. Um, and I'm, I appreciate our efforts to to improve that process and to enforce things uh, more proactively. But so that's one question. Um, also, as we're considering what sections of town, um, what overlay districts we want. Um, you know, I've heard some concern about the lake area, but I don't know that we've identified that the lake needs to have its own overlay. So, and, and near the lake is also very rural. So, I think what I've heard from the commission is that we want to allow a little more, um, a little less regulation uh, the further out you go. But it sounds like the lake has a special character as well to be considered. So we, we can't make the argument necessarily on historic preservation for the lake area, but I still hear some concern from folks about the lake area. So um, also, one pretty notable comment that I took to heart was, um, and this is more or less in their own words, why are we focusing on metal buildings when so many of our other homes and commercial buildings are falling to the ground, basically? Uh, as I drive around, especially on the west side, I notice the dilapidated homes almost more than I do any accessory buildings in the back. And sometimes the metal building in the back looks better than the roof that's getting in the house. So I know that we're responding to the metal building issue because we have a lot of folks that have been applying for permits and we have to t know what to tell them. But um, I would like to see along the lines of property values and all that, I think what I notice first is the home itself. Uh, if I lived there and I was looking at their backyard, I'd probably notice, you know, the metal building in the back more so. But uh, driving by, the first thing I notice is the home itself. So I hope that, that this effort is coupled with some concern over um, code enforcement and taking care of the, the home itself. Um, and then also another thought that I had was if we're considering an overlay for the... Um, the main entrances and the main thoroughfares, you know, throughout Guthrie. I'm wondering if that sends a message of we're just concerned about the passers-by and their experience, but what about the neighbors? You know, let's say if someone lives in a historic neighborhood uh, outside of that a th thousand foot overlay, um, they still have to to live with the did everyday. You the, did you see the Midtown overlay deal that uh, Leroy sent out to add to that overlay? Oh. Um, I'm not For sure. more histor the historic neighborhood. Oh, okay, I don't know that I saw and that. Be... I saw the division and the uh, noble. Uh -huh. It should be in this okay. packet. And, and, and it pretty much included. Um, the second to the last page. It's pretty double sided. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like uh, yeah, the link I sent out included the thousand foot overlay for Noble as okay. well as Division that we had kind of talked about at last month's meeting. And then um, kind of that got lost in there was the historic landmark district. So um, basically from Dominion House, mm -hmm. 
yeah. south to Springer. Uh -huh. You know, there's a bed, there's some there's you know, Springer is a well established yeah. street yeah. that has a lot of Victorian homes. Mm -hmm. And um, I was I was glad to see this addition to it because it looks like for the most part most every um, most every neighborhood that's uh, most hundred year old homes are included in this. Mm -hmm. uh, the thousand foot thing on the west side mm -hmm. pretty much takes care of, you know, um, Cle Cleveland, yeah. Right. Yeah. Cleveland over, and Cleveland the, and you know, and there's a lot uh, on uh, right. Noble, and, on the south, and then on, the on Cleveland to the north, and then uh, Harrison, mm -hmm. almost down to Oklahoma. On the south, it's just okay. a wide yes. swath. Right. Yeah, that helps a lot. This, yeah, sorry, I didn't notice. It. This, uh, this, this one is a, pretty much goes from the Dominion House all the way to downtown and down to Springer mm -hmm. and around the Temple. There was only one block that I thought um, should be added. On the east side, there. It's on the east. It's catacornered to the temple on the east side. And even though that block has a lot of empty lots, it's right across the street from what was known as Capitol Square. Are you saying... No, it's... Okay. it's oh, yeah, yeah. So you're saying to add, add that in? Well, and I would think, wait a minute. Or even go down... Yeah, keep the line simple. Just move just, it over a block. And just go all the way. Right, or square it off. Yeah, yeah off square. Okay. That's not included. Yeah, see that would be. And these but see, are all oh, but wait a minute. See, all of this is included in the. Uh, so you'd have to do the Noble Street overlay too, because it comes down here. Okay, so that that see, would the no, be. Yeah, but the only that. one that wasn't included, it looked like to me, was the southeast corner of the temple. Okay. And do you have the overlay for What's the for the, Noble? No, yeah, because I see. See, Noble goes clear to. Um, Are you going from yeah. basically city limits? Uh, the whole, yeah. Okay. From east to From west. city limit to city limit. Okay. Same thing with, with you know, division. where division turns into Wentz. Right. It goes all the way out Wentz, too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's always been considered pretty much the cardinal points for yes. entrance into the city. And then, you know, I think the important thing is that neighborhoods that are not included in that. That, that we control, that, that we try to come up with rules mm -hmm. that allow these buildings that think of the neighbors, that their size is not too big, mm -hmm. that they are not higher than the house. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we can recommend uh, dark roofs that yeah, match yeah. their building, yeah, and they need, to be, they need yeah. to be behind the back profile building line of the house, not, the not behind the front. Mm -hmm. And then I also think on corners, um, corner lots. And, and, and in fact, I, I took a picture of, of, you know, we actually as a commission approved a metal building a couple of years ago over near off Perkins. And the, it was a really, it was a new home and they were building a metal building and they were on the corner. So basically, let me draw it because yeah. I. That was a note that I made also, and basically on a corner lot, you have to assume that the front of the house and the side elevation, they both, in essence, have two front yards. Yes. 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 You you pay a penalty, if you will. Yes. Uh, for having a corner house, those are two front sides. And see what happened a couple of years ago, and I'm sorry, Aaron doesn't have this to show it, but the, this is a block, and this house wanted a metal building behind it. And it's the newest house out on, you know, it's on the north, it's on the east side of Perkins. And um, there was a couple of metal buildings on the block. And um, basically what they wanted to do, and the, there was a bungalow right here, bungalow home. Well, their plan was to build the metal building right here. So that when these people walked out on their front porch, they had a metal building in, to their, their view to the east. 
and we we agreed to let them do it as long as they moved it behind the side profile of the right. house. And I just think that needs to be in the that needs to be in our. I just don't recall if that was metal, but uh, I, I, we yeah. did put a building in there. Yeah. Chris, to answer some of your, I really think there's some great deals here. Uh, one thing about. Uh, and maybe some we, some of us have been here a little longer, uh, and we've heard a lot of this, this going on, as you heard Mr. Renee say, for many years. Uh, uh, the overcast district, talk, I mean the overlay district about the lake area, it's just at the lake area out there. Well, the lake area lake. wouldn't be an overdone, no, though. It, it, it's a rural. That was, that was annexed in, I do not know when, but the properties are much larger in general. Half, three quarters yeah. acre, two acres, and that's why a lot of what we've seen uh, happening here where people have gone yeah. beyond what they yeah. should have. So, so I think uh, in the new ordinance what we're recommending is that we do allow under certain conditions metal buildings in rural areas. Is that right? Well and then so we're going to we, part of it is we're going to tie it into Any also that's not right, in an overlay. Right. Sure. We're going to tie it into also maybe the sizes of the lots. That's part of the deal. Yeah. Uh, as far as the falling down houses uh, uh, there's no question that we certainly have a uh, and you can see your city council's working on that as is planning, uh, and they are taking them down as they can. But you're right, we yeah, have no, quite I, a few I that, that. I agree much. that but that catches your eye. And, and some of it comes yeah. down to. There's been some amazing progress made on the dilapidated building. Some of that is getting to know your neighbors, lending a hand, <laughs> uh, helping those that maybe can't fix up the right properties. But and um, one of the other things you noted was the fact that we have recently uh, we recently got additional staff and some yeah. of the. Uh, some of the infractions that yeah. have been allowed to happen yeah. because we didn't really have personnel, they're really addressing yeah. that too. And while that isn't in the purveyance yeah. of our planning commission, sure. it certainly helps yeah. us and our planning director. But those are excellent and I think questions. Something we have to keep in mind is, you know, we are a historic community, and we strive for that high standard of, of charm yes. and character. But yeah. we also, the socioeconomics of our community, uh, we are not a an affluent historic community by and large. You know, we are. Uh, we have a we have a lot of socioeconomic diversity and a lot of poverty in our community, and so we have to keep that in mind as we consider what's possible for. And I think in time, as the, as more folks move here and as the demographics change and things, then that will that will drive up property values, and more folks will will rehab their properties. But so thank you very much. Well, good good comments, and I know that uh, Ms. Rebecca has written those down. Uh, Mr. Chapel, uh, maybe why don't we wait until Rebecca gets back so we don't miss any of these notes here and uh, on your comments. This is somebody who's also been on the uh, the board for some time. Not and, nearly uh, as long as you. No. <laughs> I, you know, and I think I've let this be known to Rebecca. Um, when they first recommended the you know, the, the layover, no, not layover. Overlay. Uh, overlay. Overlay. Overlay, thank you. The overlay, my concern is that it wasn't inclusive enough. And mm -hmm. I like what they have done to, uh, to address the historic homes and even, um, you know, from, from college all the way down to Springer. Um, I also think that if we can control the height and the size and the mm -hmm. placement of these things, uh, in the other areas, um, um, I don't think they, um, you know, the biggest problem is usually when they're the most offensive, um, you know, we're wanting, it mentions, ex, uh, excuse me for stuttering, but accessory buildings, garage, workshop, garden shed, gazebo, carport, uh, Mother nowhere, Rogers, nowhere there. in there is barn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's right. Nowhere in there is barn. So um, I do, and, and and I'll mention this because they have talked about it, and we talked about it in our meeting. Um, some places have a fifty six percent requirement. Oh yes. Thank you. Oh, uh, for site coverage, you mean? Yeah, they have a well. They have a fifty percent. Some some lo, some cities, because they looked at have a fifty percent. So it can't be. It cannot be uh, fifty percent larger than your home. Um, oh, okay. 
There's also uh, a 2.5 percent property. Uh, uh, what maximum. Yes, a 2.5 percent maximum on property, which means that if you had half an acre, now that that can allow for some larger building. Um, but depending on the house, you know, if it can't if it can't be larger than your home. So I just feel like what we have to consider in the other places is the height of the building and the size of the building. Mm -hmm. If it's 2.5% of the property, um, you know, if you have a half acre, you can have a 500 and something. Mm -hmm. Square foot. Square foot building. If you have an acre, you could have a thousand square foot building. But if you're, if you're, you know, if we had the, I'm just throwing this out there. If we had a 50% rule on, you know, it, can't, it can only be half the size of your home, you could live on a, you could live on an acre, and if your house is a thousand square feet, your your accessory building couldn't be over 500 square feet. So those are things. Those are things okay. to consider. I think we must have some flexibility to to, uh, to be able to right. realize. By the way, you mentioned the barn. Again, the flexibility can lead to unenforceable. Yeah, it's hard to reel that yeah. in. And, 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 and I feel like what we're trying to do here is, is um, for years, and b before Rebecca and certainly before Leroy got here, um, you know, there was just, um, it's, it's gotten to the point that so many of these buildings have been built or permitted or not permitted. Um, you know, when planning has five people coming in a week asking for a metal building and they're telling them no, which they do, and they've got a neighbor that has a metal building. Um, several neighbors, maybe, that have metal building. It seems like we need a new starting point so that we can come up with something that's enforceable, that has teeth, that gets some coverage, some press. And I feel like for the we we have a, we've tried to keep our historical neighborhoods historical, and we've tried to keep the other neighborhoods protected from big, you know, mammoth work, uh, you know, storage buildings, basically. So. Well, and that was one point that was in here, which I thought was really good, was that those accessory buildings could not be turned into. Um, uh, Business. A business, a com for commercial use. Which and we know that's happened. Oh yeah, it happens. Yeah. Uh, one one other question: the bigger it is, the more likely it is that more it's going tempting. to happen. Yeah. One question that Chris did ask uh, is how do we educate property owners? One of the things we've discussed, and I know that uh, staff is looking at it, is hopefully letting people know through our monthly newsletters about everything from the height of their grass to some of the things. So they're doing the best they can. Yeah, you mentioned uh, you mentioned yeah. barn there, Mr. Joe. Uh, and of course, residential, you're not supposed to have livestock unless you're grandfathered in. So these buildings that we're talking about for accessory buildings would basically be more maybe for small shops if somebody's got a little mm -hmm. hobby. Certainly your garden equipment, your lawn equipment, and things like that. So or theoretically, there working, should be great or, big cars. you know, to work on your four cars. Or there, well, and then we do have people that have Inside antique cars. Inside the building. <laughs> antique cars. So... Uh, but we just we we've, we've reached a point in time where, you know, what do they say? You can't find an idea whose time has come. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I've, you know, if you drive from in more rural areas, mm -hmm. a lot of homes together. But I mean, you, I drove from Norman to Moore, um, probably on Sooner Road or something mm -hmm. like that. Five hundred thousand dollar homes with 4,000 square foot metal buildings. Um, of course, they aren't in city limits, and they probably have, you know, um, three or four acres. How large are the lots? Yeah. The, yeah. Big lots. Don't know. But I mean, there's yeah. just I one right after the other. Yeah. And yeah. you can go out here to, what, Triple Crown? Is it Triple Crown? Right off Seward Road, that new uh, housing. Triplet? Triplet. Oh, or you're talking triplet. about the name of the addition. Yeah, I'm trying I'm to come sure up with. I'm not sure on what the one more towards the end of the county if, line? If you go to, well, I still call it Stuckey's, isn't that American? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is Triple I've Crown. Seen that. Triple yeah. Crown, yeah. If you, if you just get off on, that's Seward Road, right? 
Yeah. Like you're going to Lady sure. E. Yeah. And then you take a left, there's a huge housing addition with a lot of beautiful nice. homes out there. A lot of metal buildings. That's horse country. Yes, it yeah. is horse country. Mm -hmm. And um, But that being said, I just feel like we need to provide an option to non-historical neighborhoods that uh, don't harm the aesthetic value of neighbors' homes. Exactly. I don't think yeah, I could add much to all of that. Uh, uh, maybe additional comments from any of the others before maybe we ask the public here. Uh, you got um, uh, just, on any of the comments or guys made? Yeah, um, adding on to Chris what, what you said about there being different types of neighborhoods, and I think this is what in the in the overlays we can certainly look at, like the, the 1,000 foot going down Noble and Division. There are other areas, uh, like you say, the the non-historic residential, those would have maybe a, a different set. The the lake areas, especially farther farther south, you know, that lake area would have different requirements because the lots could be bigger. It's it's more rural. Some of yeah, it's well, probably and, old and, agricultural. And of course, addressing what you can do on the size of the land that you have right, is something that right. needs to be addressed as right. well. If you're, yeah, the density And not is being less. able to put an accessory building unless there is a primary structure, mm -hmm. you know, that there's a lot of rules that, that, if, that we can get in there that can keep some of the things that have happened in the past from happening again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The height, size, yeah, those are the and things that, that and, and location. Yeah are primary. And some of that is defined within, oh, what is it, 2802? <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember some of the ordinance numbers that are um, in the area of, that, de that define some of the um, building requirements for getting a building permit. And it does talk about height of buildings, and, and maybe we can clean that up, like you say, because sometimes an idea has, has come that that things just need to be updated. You know, our requirements you know, if are got, old. If if you've got a, from someone who's old. If 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 you've got one of these new houses that has one of these great big pitched roofs. Yeah. I mean, you could have a pitched roof on the building in your backyard that was 20 feet tall, and it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be obnoxious mm -hmm. with the home. Unless it you were tower. Having, unless you're barbecuing in your yard next door. <laughs> well, that's. And That's I mean, all. it would be like living in New York with two skyscrapers on either side of you and you, you right. didn't sell well, out. <laughs> we'll come, right we'll come, come to public comments in just a minute. <laughs> one thing I would like to, one of the things I think we, we, we need to talk a little bit more about more commissioners is, is this the metal, non-metal building situation. Mm -hmm. That's what's happened so much to, to planning. And some of the things that staff has put in here that uh, on the metal is that the, must meet the following standards. So I, I think uh, I'm an old general contractor. I like wood stick buildings and concrete, but the new metal buildings, I must say, are far better than, than the ones used to be. Uh, I really, I really like to see compatible colors with the main structure. I think we need to hold to that so that so that your accessory building doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. It should be. Compatible, I think. I think most of us want that, and most of our neighborhoods want that, uh, and not only just in the historic district, but yeah. even out in the rural district. The so then it's just a you case of pick a color for it. You might as well pick one. Yeah, pick one, one that uh, you know you don't want a, a lovely uh, home of, of, of uh, shall we say nice quiet earth tone colors, and suddenly you put something yellow, bright and yellow, out in the middle of it. By the way, we happen to have one that was grandfathered in out. In the area, and that was grandfather years and the, ago. And the E. And the E. And I don't remember the E. E's are so important to the look of the building. They just make the building look like it fits more. And I think what the staff has done in here, they're, they've got a good start on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll let them comment on that a little bit later. Um, any further comments? Uh, we, we've only got about maybe 15 more minutes in here before we go into regular session. Uh, Chris, any comments on Joe or, or whatever? Any further ones? I, I like your, your thoughts. This, Does this anybody think right that here? the metal building should be taller than the resident? No. No. So I just want to. I just want to know okay. if we're going to agree that, there. Okay. What are some thoughts on the side? And, and we all think that they should have ease. Mm -hmm. Overhangs, whatever. Overhangs. Okay. And then, uh, 
what about uh, what do we got? Um, well, they, they, they've staff has put in there something about the grooved look. We don't want to see an overabundance of a grooved look, which, which obviously immediately yells out at you and throws you right in the face. It's metal. There's a lot of I mean, we don't have any suggest on. Uh, I don't know what page this is on, but at the top of the page it says 120 square foot. Miss Rebecca's going to cover that again for us during staff conference. Now, Bob, oh, the lots mm -hmm. size. I, I, I and, think, okay. The lots less than one half acres. You know, They've got one half I would think that lots less than one half acres, you're going to be entering into the size of the home. Yeah. And and if it's one half acre, like I said, you couldn't. No matter what size your home was, the building couldn't be bigger than 500. If you have a half acre. Yeah, 2,000 square foot home. Yeah. I mean, on any lot, the residence should be the primary yeah. building yes, in any situation. It's an accessory building. Right. If it's, anything, it's not primary. Right. If it's bigger, then it's, it screams commercial, and that should be in a whole other district. I don't know if we can make it where, um, you know, like we looked at a couple of those. Um, you know, out on Lake Drive, those two, those the two that were sort of nice looking building, but the fact that they were so far away from the house, one of them for sure. Um, you know, in a perfect world, those when you know, I don't think you can. I don't know that you can force them to put it behind their home. And, I, and what I mean by that. Not only behind the rear building line, but the side building line too. Mm -hmm. You know oh, where? It's on a corner. Huh? Or are you talking oh, about on a corner? Head? On a corner, yeah. But I'm talking about like in the middle of the block. Can you, you know, where? Um, when you've got two, you know, for example, okay. where where I live and most people live, if your neighbor were to put a accessory building in his side yard next to your house, you know, up to your property line. It would be a lot better if it was in, in the backyard as opposed to you having a view out of the side of your house of the metal building. Well, there's still a setback requirement on either side of the property. What is it? Isn't it like three feet? I know that's on the five on yeah. our one. And uh, five feet per side yard in our one. And so back from from the so side property, property line, line. Mm -hmm. but usually not always because we have a lot of R1 out by the lake but typically those are very small city lots you know that maybe you have 50 to 70 feet of frontage right um, and then someone snick, snick, puts a, a metal building beside their house I think that's right. again, when backyard. we get the bigger acreages that we, we got. I see what you're saying that we, we need to maybe allow, be able to allow a little bit of different location or placement of that. Sometimes if the yard slopes, you're limited. There's another priority. Or they put it on the side and it's 180 square feet. So they're not going to come in for a building permit because it's smaller than 200, but they. That's where they place it. And we do, right. not everyone knows, yeah, but it does would. check, but we do ask if it's under than 200 feet, not to get a permit, but to check with right. us on what the setback should be before you place it. Well, you know, if, it's, if it's behind the, the back building line, it would, it would be less, you know, obtrusive. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to ask our, before we run out of time for our workshop, I'd like to ask our, our, our guests here, our, our public guests, would you be kind enough to uh, state your name and your address for uh, for the record? Sure. And uh, we can start with you, ma'am. Sylvia Atkinson. Sylvia Atkinson. Uh-huh. And my address is 213 Foster Road. 213 Foster Road. Almost. Yes, okay. It's almost done. A month to move it in. <laughs> Go ahead. Any, any number one, what you saw, what you've heard, uh, your yes, comments. Sir. Um, thank you very much for helping us on this. Um, we uh, put everything we had to move out here, and we're older, so my husband's a Marine, and he's still working right now, and we're building a house, and our thought was to build a house that we live on Foster Road, and so it's right off of Sooner, going down toward the lake, but no lake views. 
So the situation is mostly older houses. I know where most of those places are out there. And uh, the houses on this side of the road are deep and they go to the little lake overflow. But on our side of the, the street, our house is 605 feet wide and 160 feet deep. So we built a nice little house we thought would fit into the area, a little farmhouse, put almost $250,000 in it right now. But our situation is it's 1,565 square feet because we're downsizing. We don't want the big house, but it's beautiful, porches, the whole thing. So our shop would be, and we have all the big trees. We've been working the land. Our shop would be next to it, but a little bit down, not obstructing anybody's views, but different than someone else's situation. So I think that everybody's going to have kind of a different situation. And we've talked to lots of people, and, you know, we heard the forgiveness to do it anyway. We're not going to do that. We're like, you know, <laughs> we want to do everything right. And so I think a lot of this is going to be a case-by-case -case basis on what we do in, you know, what you all do. And it's just all different. It's all different stuff. Are you familiar with this one, Mr. Rickett? Yeah, you can I believe your husband came to our meeting he last time. He spoke last time. time. Uh -huh. And I knew by the house. Yeah, you've looked at the house and seen it's kind of... You have, don't you have a couple of accessory buildings <clears throat> already? There's a tractor barn up at the top of the property, and then the new house is here. And then, but the tractor barn, it's really, really old. I mean, it's like, you know, it needs work, and we're going to try to do that. But he's got the classic car situation thing going on, so... and. We honestly, I mean, to even build a shop that even looks halfway decent is 30000 and up. And so he just wants, he doesn't, that's what I mean, I don't know. He doesn't want the huge, huge ones, but he wants something to put a couple of vehicles in and, you know, have it be his shop for his own self, mm -hmm. to personal. And, and y'all were looking for like a 30 by 40 with the 10 foot link to? Uh -huh. Is that still? Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, yeah, and so, I mean, that's, we're willing to work with you and just to see what we could do. Mm -hmm. And we've met with all our neighbors. They're all super nice, and they're just glad we're there. And then we cleaned the property up. It used to have an old red barn from the 80s that was fall. I mean, all, how, what's the square footage of that? I well, you had said, well, 30 by 40, 1,200. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I had the lot at two and a quarter acre. Uh-huh. And then, um, and then this is just from the, the draft minutes of last month, uh, but um, 30 by 40 with a 10 foot lean to. Uh -huh. And then he did mention that there was one metal building on the current lot, so that's the old yeah. chapter barn. Do you know uh -huh. how big maybe roughly that is? It, you could get like two just regular cars in it. Okay, so maybe like 575, like a two It's a 24 garage. by 24. Just okay. came into my brain. <laughs> 24 by 24. 600 square feet. Yeah. Okay. It's been there a long time, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy that used to own it just had that there. He didn't ever have a house there. Would you want to keep that one as well as uh, building the, the Bethel Burger? I that think he would want to eventually get a permit and try to fix it and make it more compatible with what else we and have. You're saying the main structure is only about 1,565 square feet? It is. Mm -hmm. It's a two-story and kind of like that farmhouse mm -hmm. look. What's the what's the size of the building that she's wanting to build with the lean to? Uh, thirty by forty with the ten foot lean to. And the ten foot lean to is is that full length of the building too? Say forty feet long. So is that ten times another forty? Another forty feet. Yeah, the shop 30. would face the road, and then the lean to would be on this side. So Twelve hundred square feet without the lean to. Uh huh. And then. Does the lean to count as part of the? I would imagine. It would because under the roof line. So you'd be another 10 times 40, another 400 square feet, give or take, or 30, whatever size it's on. So you're talking about a building built, built bigger than your house? Well, it would certainly be very close to the same size. Yeah, yeah under 1,300 square feet. Well, the house also has uh, porches all the way other, around it. And it's got the other building. So that makes the house even bigger. The front porch goes from one so side all the way around. If you're comparing roof lines. Yes, if you're comparing, because the roof line that would, goes. That would add to the square footage. Yeah, the roof line goes all the way across the porches. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's, good. that's what made like the house expensive. The full footprint of it. Yeah, and yeah. then the back has a porch all the way across the back also. Yeah. 
Are you going to put a cupola on it? No, I'm just <laughs> well, we will if that's what we need to do. <laughs> uh, I think we just found this I think we, we, yeah. can, we can certainly listen to that one and look at what the quarter <coughs> acre. I don't think are. that we make our rules. Yeah, no, so. I don't think we make the. the I don't think we can look at your property and decide what we're doing everywhere else. Yes, yeah, this yeah. may require a variance. Yeah, and, and it may require variance on your yeah. part because it sounds like you have a unique piece right. of property. And what's yeah. the size of your lot? It's 2.2 .2 acres. Okay. It's, it's just very, a wide yeah, lot. Wide. It's, and it's, it's downhill. Okay. You know, gotcha. it's this. It's this, a beautiful this, house. By thank the way. you. It's this, and then the next one, and then down at the bottom. It's really unused land, and we, when we first bought the property, we worked for seven months out there, just me and him cleaning it, mm -hmm. and we put a six thousand dollar drain down there because mm -hmm. all the water came from the next street over down through our property, and it wasn't the city's deal. So we said, okay, we'll fix it. And it goes on, you know, then there was a drain there, but it was all caved in. And yeah. so we're just trying to improve the area. You know, we don't want to, we want to do it by the rules. <laughs> Whatever Ms. Atkinson, we, we certainly appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. So we got one more speaker here. I'd like to give a little chance to talk before we have to start our regular meeting. Name? Name and uh, address, please. Sue Ducharme. I live at 6315 Lakeside Drive. Mm -hmm. I'm your neighbor. Oh, well, sort of. of. Okay, right yeah. On the corner. Um, I, I just want to comment on overlay or no overlay and the lake area. <coughs> Number one, if you can even get a little peak of that water, we're talking Guthrie Lake now, um, your home just cost you $30,000 more. So to have someone just because they may have a little extra room throw up a building and we all know that Dad really doesn't care where that building goes as long as he can get his, his barn. Uh, and I think that, I really think that we should consider just what we're going to allow in an area where they're building, how much did you say yours? Is it about 250 right now? At right now, and she's not nearly finished. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's 1,600 square feet. That Give includes upstairs. Yeah. So, if you're looking, and keep in mind too that they've just built, you know, some huge homes out there, big, beautiful homes. Uh, it's a horseshoe. Foster comes in, it's Lakeside Drive, but it goes out on Lakewood Road. They've built four homes out there in the last two years. So it's still developing. Yeah. It can't develop if people start putting up metal barns. No one wants to live there if they have those metal barns. Certainly not uh, if they're going to have to pay a higher premium for a home. There's little, if they look like the old fishing hut or something, they might have two bedrooms. There's one vacant house in that whole neighborhood, and I'm sure someone owns it already. But no one sells homes out there. I mean, they just don't. They hang on to them. And even the little shacks are selling for nearly $200,000. Wow. So, so when you say metal barns as versus a metal accessory building, we're, we're trying to stay away from this word barns because theoretically no livestock. Barns are more associated with livestock. Maybe a shop for, as you mentioned, your, your tractors. Well, if it walks like a duck. <laughs> okay. I mean, you get what I mean. Okay, okay. Anytime you have a big metal building or a huge wooden building, that's a barn. After a certain size, it's a barn. Uh, but I do know of two homeowners out there, and you, I believe you know who they are, where both were, uh, both buildings, metal buildings built next door with that five-foot leeway. Both homes next door flooded. So a good rain, if those, if those barns are set up and enough, close enough to the house next door, even if they've got five foot on their side, Five foot on the other homeowner's side, ten feet's not enough. When you've got water crashing down off of that building, depending on the roof line, naturally. But we've had two homes, neither of them permitted, and both of their neighbors, Patty for one, sure. you know who she is. So uh, I know Neighborhood Solutions has tried to provide flooring for these homeowners so they can get back on their feet. Um, as you may know, 
insurance doesn't cover that kind of water damage unless you have special <coughs> insurance. And so the neighbor who flooded their property said, well, we're not going to do anything about that. So what, what are you basically asking for? Well, Mr. Sure. a couple of or, things. Or, 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 or pointing out to us, please. Yeah. Um, you know, I used to really be opposed to those little sheds that you can buy at Home Depot. Today that looks good. They're <laughs> like 8 by 10s, 10 by 10. It's big enough to store lawnmowers and garden tools and a little of something else. But to allow anything over 200 square feet in these neighborhoods. I drive through this town every day on my way to work and there's there's very little room in these in these yards for that kind of thing. So yeah, it's no matter how pretty you make it, those smaller wooden sheds don't cost any more than than the huge. Certainly not as much, but it, they don't cost any more than a metal shed would. They need to be set back all the way to the back of the property, not next to it, not five feet from their home, but all the way to the back. At least that way we're looking at a alleyway, so I know we don't have alleys anymore, but at least it would be away from uh, the street level and that sort of thing. So that's my thought. Okay, thank you very much. Those just have, by the way, since you brought that up, those happen to be uh, something from uh, Home Depot. Uh, and, uh, and the prices are in there, including the size of the interest rate. We probably need to... Uh, we need to uh, close this meeting out. And uh, so uh, thank you all for your input. She did a fine job in your absence, sir. She did, she truly did. Better job and than I would have done. Thank all of you for uh, we were just our work session. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Miss uh, Miss Blaine, for putting this together for us. Uh, so, could I have a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved and done. And now we'll move right into. Uh, do we need. Do we need. Anybody like to take a little five-minute break quickly? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. And then we'll. Uh, we'll